Yo, what's up guys? This is Alex from AlexRoomSound.com and today I'm going to show you how I made one of my Monster Cat inspired drops. I figured it would be a good thing to kind of take you through the layers and show you how I made each layer. So in this video, I'm going to play the drop, obviously, and then I'm going to take you through, show you how I made the drums, show you how I made the bass, and show you how I made all the other layers, the leads and the effects and, and I'm also going to be explaining why they're there and the importance of having all those layers. A lot of people ask me how I layer my drops to sound big and how I arrange my drops to sound big so this video will help you out with that. Before we get into it I want to give a quick shout out to my man Phantom X and Brandon Movic, you guys are killing it in the comment section. And I know that every time you guys leave a nice comment, that that comment comes with a nice thumbs up on my video. So I appreciate you guys for doing that so much. Thanks for keeping up with me. So the drop I'm gonna teach you guys about today sounds like this. I'm gonna do build up into the drop so you get the full experience. So how did I make that drop? Well, let's break it down right now. This drop is quite a few layers, I guess you could say. Out of all the layers, the kick, bass, and leads and other things in there, everything does have a unique layer to it that helps it come out a little bit more. And I'll kind of show you that as we go. So let's start with all of the drums. How did I make the drums? Well, obviously it started with the kick because you want to build a drop like this around the kick. If the kick is being competed with, with anything, then your drop automatically shrinks in size. So look at it like that. Start with a kick and add to the kick. And then anything that fights with it, just take it out because it's not going to help you out. This kick I got from Splice Sounds. So this was the first kick I started out with. And there wasn't enough low end in it. So I added another kick with a lot more low end. And so together they actually work really well. And I didn't even have to EQ this top kick. This is where I started following some of the drop ideas that were released on Monster Cat, especially Kuro's Possession. If you go listen to Kuro Possession, uh, the, these drops are going to sound really, really similar. Uh, that was like as close as I could get without actually copying uh, a Monster Cat artist. But the snare rhythm I took was this one. Yeah, I took like that kind of, uh, I call it a, a Hispanic rhythm because you hear this rhythm a lot in Hispanic music with the, uh, with that like double snare. But this whole rhythm carried so much energy and the snare layers here was this one, this one. So these two were layered together. And again, I got both of these snares from Splice as per usual. I get all of my drum samples from Splice. And so that clap kind of layers every other snare. I could have probably went without that clap or used a clap with more power to it, but I think I grabbed the first clap that I found. <laughs> I just like, I gave up after that. But after that, I layered this on top of every fourth snare. And that just adds, you know, an interesting feeling to every fourth snare and it helps keep your snares not boring. It help keep, helps keep your whole rhythm not boring. So then after that, I went ahead and started throwing some extra sounds in there like hi-hats and other snares. Mm -hmm. 
this is one of my favorite snares right here. I love listening to it, especially like when I'm in my, when I'm in my car and I like I jam out to this song before I go to like a club or something. This is the snare that I try to concentrate on every time I listen to it because it kind of is like it's kind of like a backboard in between each snare. I don't know. It's it's interesting. I like that snare. But again, without that snare, the drum rhythm would be that much less interesting. So when you're layering drums, remember to give yourself enough drums that it's not empty and every little gap is filled in by something. Even when you're even when you're doing like a chill beat, you have to remember those extra drums that really help bring everything out. So that was all of my drums and after I had the drums laid down, I went ahead with the bass. And the bass sounds like this. And it communicates quite good with the kick. So like the kick happens and then a millisecond later the bass happens. And that's really good communication. There isn't like too much of a delay before the bass starts to happen and the bass doesn't happen so quickly that it crashes into the low end of the kick and that's like a really important thing to understand so for my leads nothing too crazy no wait that wasn't the lead that was just like a, a special effect lead these are the leads just like that uh, I can't make dubstep, so these are all presets. I, before I made this track, I just went shopping on Cymatic's website <laughs> and I bought these sounds. Using presets is totally okay, as long as you can write a good song around them. How these leads break down is, uh, this one's called Bass Divine. I edited, the, edited these all slightly to my liking. But I think I started out with this lead. And the point of this lead was the dimension. So without the dimension, sounds like that. Actually sounds pretty tight without the dimension, but with it, it kind of rides out in each ear and it gives like a feeling of wideness to this lead. So anytime I have a lead that's, that's uh, pure focus is wideness like this one, I always have another dry signal on top of it. And so that's probably gonna be what I have here. Yeah, so I have the same thing without wideness to it, just to enhance the uh, original signal that is that drier signal without all the crazy effects. The more effects you have, the farther away from your original sound you get, obviously. So you wanna always have that layer that is your original sound. So then I had this layer. I do not remember that layer at all. But uh, the purpose of that layer, if we listen closely, it's just mainly like gutty and really low. It's like a lower tone. And that's just to get that warmth sound. So without it, these are kind of like paper thin. And so I threw this in there just to get that little bit of throatiness. You can barely hear it, but that's like the best part about using sounds like that is you can barely hear them and they make everything a little bit better. So that's how I did that lead. All cymatics presets, slightly edited, but used correctly and nobody would ever know. Uh, so let's get to all these extra sounds. This is, this is like the part of music that uh, beginner producers tend to struggle with the most, and that is those extra sounds that make the quietness and fill in the gaps. Uh, makes that stuff all more interesting to listen to. So that's just a uh, symbol that's kind of going quietly in the background and it just keeps it moving. It keeps something moving. It's not too loud, but it is there. You never want to make something like this too loud or else your high frequencies will get really boring 
and they're one of the that's the most important range that in my opinion that you should keep moving at all times so you shouldn't have anything static there so that's why I keep these very quiet and then here is another group of important elements It's just like, it's literally like a machine, just like breathing. It sounds really, really cool. You get that. So these kind of break down like this. You, you have these, which are those cymatic, or cymatic, cinematic sounds. And we have this one, which I don't understand that one at all. I don't know why it's there. It's only there and it's not there. Weird. Um, but then I have this. And this is just strictly to keep the high frequencies hot in the beginning of the drop, but then it kind of goes away. Uh, you wouldn't want something like this to go throughout the entire drop or else it's just going to get really boring and loud and stale. So then we have this crash symbol. What's a uh, drop without a little crash symbol on the attack? This is a really small uh, attack symbol. I would use something bigger, uh, something more crashy if I was making this drop today. I made this drop like seven months ago, I think, six months ago. So yeah, this just keeps the silence alive. This keeps the silence alive. I think that's every element of this drop. I hope you guys took some nice value from this video. If you did, I would really, really appreciate a good thumbs up. And if you're new here, subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications so you can be notified every time I make some heat on this channel or when I do a dope tutorial just like this one. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Peace out.